All right, DEF CON. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to try something new. Um, it's going to be kind of a shocker for you. It's something we haven't really done uh, too often. It's uh, called starting on time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, we've, you're going to notice we've tightened up the closing a bit. Um, every year we try to make it more compact and be uh, sensitive to your time. And so normally it's about, you know, used to be two hours. How many remember that? Yeah. <laughs> then it was an hour and a half. And now we're targeting an hour. So you can get out of here and get to the bars and hang out a little bit more. So, so we're going to try to do it in an hour. So before we really get started, I need a little bit of audience feedback. How many people um, noticed this year there's two things we did to try to make things a little bit better for everybody. One is five more minutes between tracks so you don't feel so crushed getting from room to room. Was that good? Yeah? Excellent. Okay. So, so we'll stick with that then because did anybody really feel like a 45 minute talk Excuse was that me? much shorter Excuse than me. a... What do you call this? this? What? Excuse What's me. Going? We have a tradition at DEF CON. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe we have a first time speaker at DEF CON 21. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. What is it? Tan Dark? Tangent. Mr. Tangent. <laughs> so, we have a shot for I'm you. I'm supposed Wait, to drink this? Shot? Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. To Jeff, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Tangent is going to represent all first time attendees at DEF CON. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you. I was saying, uh, um, I was saying, very smooth, very smooth alcohol. <laughs> um, <laughs> the finest that the money can buy. Um, so that was one thing. And how much did you guys get into the villages? We almost doubled the sizes of the villages this year. So that was good. So, so you notice we, we took away space from one of the tracks and we basically gave it to the villages. And that whole idea was how do I break you guys into smaller sections, smaller groups so you can spend time and make new friends and kind of get that smaller one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of creative problem-solving thing going. And so we added 20 stations to the hardware hacking villages and they were like filled. So next year we're going to probably add another 20. And it's... <laughs> so you can sort of see where this is heading. We might actually depending, we might actually have to cut a track of speaking, but instead we'll end up with all these extra villages and all these other contests and things you can participate in. So uh, that's really where we're trying to go with this, is get you guys into smaller problem solving groups and just really, uh, you know, really enjoy it. And then it'll be on us when we're selecting speeches to try to just really pick the best speeches. Um, and that's what's happening. So I'm glad you guys are buying in on it. That's what we're doing next year. So very, very good. Yay team. <laughs> so, we're now going to start the closing ceremonies. Um, and this is a tradition we've done for a while. We're going to announce all the winners of all the various contests. We have up here all the black badges that get the winners to the black badge rated contests into DEF CON for life. It ch changes year to year what sometimes th what the contests are based on the uh, amount of effort involved, technical skill needed, and to a large part some are just tradition. Everybody always plays in Hacker Jeopardy, so Hacker Jeopardy always, uh, always participates. It's also the first year of the new Copter the Flag organizers, uh, Legit BS. And so I think they've done a fantastic year this year. So we'll be finding out uh, who the winners are. So I've got my sheet, I've got my numbers on it, and I think I've talked to my five minutes. So I'm going to – wait. Two more minutes. I got two minutes and 43 seconds. You better hold that up to everybody. Oh. See? Look. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you know, if, if we get too much more organized, we'll be threatened, we'll be, we'll be confused with somebody with a, with a plan. So I'm going <laughs> to <intentionally, laughs> intentionally inject some chaos monkey in there and, and throw you a curve and not go with it. So um, let me see. There's a really old embarrassing picture of me somebody's found up on stage. <laughs> so 
I want to introduce uh, Lockheed. Remember last year when Lockheed retired? <laughs> it's like, um, what are you doing here? Yeah, because that worked out well. That's right. It's a curse uh, and a blessing. So <clears throat> I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Lockheed, and he's going to go through uh, some of the, uh, the items here, and we're going to uh, pass the torch on a few of our staff that are retiring, like Lockheed. <laughs> <laughs> so we fully expect to see them back maybe next year and uh, doing something else. Um, but for now, they're changing their, their main role and maybe transitioning into something else. So Lockheed, take it away. All right. So first question, how many people believe that they have survived DEF CON now? I have some bad news for you. You did it wrong. <laughs> um, first of all, I've really got to take just a couple minutes here. We have an, uh, an amazing staff that puts this together for you guys. We work literally all year round to make this happen. So I've got to call out all the different teams. Uh, Cheryl and Doolittle with production. We've got Noid, CJ, Lee with security, keeping you guys safe and organized. Speaker operations who make sure speakers show up. The network team who provides you internet access for the porns. Contest and event for, what was it, 30% of the floor space? Yeah. Yeah. Registration who made sure that that long damn line moved as quick as possible. Dispatch, which you guys don't see, but they help keep us organized and actually talking to each other. The swag guys for, you know, all the shit you buy. Info booth for providing you guys updates to things that were wrong in the program. <laughs> Our quartermaster staff for making sure that shit arrives and gets doled out for you guys. The press corps for making sure that the press gets the story right. The arts and entertainment crew for bringing you guys some pretty kick-ass artists to enjoy the parties at night. And of course, Neil and Nikita for working in Jeff's office and having to actually deal with him on every single day basis. <laughs> and how many people saw the documentary? Good? You liked it? Yeah? So we, we definitely have to once again thank Jason and Russ for all their hard work, giving up their lives for the last two years to make this happen. Now, as Jeff said, we have some friends who clearly have an active fantasy life. Um, so we'd like to take just a few minutes to recognize the people who believe that they are retiring. <laughs> so we want to start with Zach Franken, who has run operations for the last 20 years. Zach? Thank you, Dave Kong. Thank you for all my fucking gray hair. So, just to make sure that your excuses you can't afford to come back, we're making sure you can get in for free forever. Thank yeah. You. Now. We've never done this before. It's really heavy and probably won't make it through x-ray. Um, but we've had this special plaque made for you. You're the first person to ever receive it, sort of Lifetime Achievement Award. Goon Emeritus. It's a, <laughs> it's a new... <laughs> So 
So, uh, so we'll see you again next year, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on you guys. <laughs> Thank so, you so much. Well, wait, no, we're not done yet. You need to, you need to keep the time so you know how much time is left until the next con. So here's a pocket watch for you to keep time. <laughs> yep. Thank you so much. That's from the security guns. This is from all the security guns, all the red sharks that keep you safe. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and Zach, finally, having been to your house and had dinner, <laughs> Knowing how skilled you are actually in the kitchen and, you, and you're really good at what you do back at home, we wanted to provide you this very nice knife set to take back with you. <laughs> now, just remember, just remember, when you go through security at the airport, this is a culinary art exhibition. <laughs> so congratulations. And here's to another 20 years of DEF CON. We've seen it change so much over the years. We've grown up as a community, and I have to say we are fucking awesome, so keep it up. Yeah. You may have recognized his mohawk <laughs> and his guitar playing. But Romer has been a long time goon, uh, one of my good friends. And as soon as I moved to Washington, D.C., he moved to California. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. But, uh, he needed somebody to take care of the colo. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But now he's five minutes from the colo, so it's really convenient. <laughs> he can just swap out servers whenever necessary. So uh, I don't know how I want to really introduce you. You found a niche at DEF CON by doing many different things over the years, and you've done really well at every one of them. And so it's like feels really bad losing you, but you've done a great job in training your staff and promoting people over the years, and so it's going to be left in good hands, right? It better be, because <laughs> you're going to be back next year, right? <laughs> yeah, apparently this retiring thing doesn't work exactly the way you thought it does, but... <laughs> so, uh, so we've got something for you. Also probably not safe for x-ray. So, uh, so if Zach is goon emeritus, let's see what you are. <laughs> Goon drunkus. Goonus drunkus. <laughs> Guitarus hammerus. <laughs> you are the second ever Goon Emeritus. And I'm not going to embarrass you by reading all the stuff, but Romer's been with us since DEF CON 7. And so I think he's put in his, uh, his 12 years. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you don't get one of these black badges unless you've been with us for at least 10. So you've just made the cut, man. Thank you very much. Thanks. It's going to be really sad seeing you go. The only thing, the only thing I want to say is, is thank you to you for I mean, all these years. This has been an absolute blast. We did. The, I've always done it because I love it, and I've always done it because I love you guys. And DefCon would not be what it is without you, so thank you guys all for showing up every year and making this worthwhile for us to do. And next year, let's just all drink and me not have to work. <laughs> yeah, so we found this really embarrassing picture of Noid. <laughs> and if you, if, you look at the, uh, if you look at the badge, I think that's a DEF CON 5 badge. Yep. So, so Noid is one of a handful of people that I know, I've met and known since DEF CON 1. There's, I think, Connell, the original goon metalhead, but, uh, and Jennifer Granick, I think, came to the very first one, but there's not that many people from the very first one. And not only did he stick around for 20 years, he put in 21 years at DEF CON. And he doesn't know it, but I do this presentation and it has that little VW bug with all of the people from DEF CON 1 essentially sticking out of the VW Beetle. And he's one of those people, right up with LF1 and some of the really early pioneers. Um, so it's really sad, it's bittersweet to see Noid move on, but I fully understand it and I support him. And he's really revolutionized the way we approached it. It went from a kind of an ad hoc, hey, can you keep an eye on things and tell me when they're lighting the 
pool on fire with uh, you know floating gasoline or something <laughs> to you seem to put out fires pretty quickly would you like to do that full time sir and uh, so uh, he's done a fantastic job and <clears throat> you can guess what he's getting from us <laughs> he is emeritus number three and uh, anyway it's just um, it's, it, it's one of those things where it's kind of it's kind of tearful to see you go man but I know you you have well, anyway, we'll see if you come back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Give it up! What's going on back there? What is going on back there? So can I talk into this one? Damn. <laughs> Are you going to cry? No. Yeah. not going to cry. Do it again. First off, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. And everybody else on the senior staff, it has been a pleasure for the last 21 years. Um, it's amazing that I've been able to be a part of this thing and watch it grow from what? 30 to 50 of us in a room yeah. to we have storage rooms larger than the first DEF CON room. <laughs> <laughs> but what I really want to say is thanks to my team uh, for allowing me to lead them all these years. And I think you all are going to do real good under CJ, who will be replacing me. Give it up for CJ. And again, thank you for letting me command for the last, I think we've been formalized as more than just me since what, DEF CON 5? Yeah. Or DEF CON 2? Yeah, 2. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, thanks for letting me be a part of this for as long as I've been a part of it. And I'm looking forward to whatever's next. Also, I have two people on my team that are retiring this year. They've both put in well over 10 years and they have been a critical part of the success of DEF CON security. Um, Linda Slide, Londo, get up here, Linda. So, with your 10, ten plus years of service. Um, you guys both have earned your black badge. Trust me, you have earned your black badge. Yeah! Thank you, everyone, for letting me, a part, let me, letting me be a part of this. And then I'll, I'm sure I'll probably see you at DEF CON 22. Yeah. <laughs> so. yes. right. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, for, for those of you who don't know the man, I'll tell a really quick story. In the planning for DEF CON 20, um, during some of the staff meetings, uh, Jeff asked Noid, 
Is there anything the security team needs? One word, battle axes. <laughs> so, we're still waiting on them. No, we give you goon caliber. <laughs> Someone tweet overheard. I got a fucking battle axe. <laughs> so. Sweet. By the way, you signed this yourself. Yes. 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 <laughs> no one told me not to. <laughs> Would you have paid attention anyway? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Um, I'm Sky Dog. Hi, everyone. We having fun yet? <laughs> Hey, watch it now, watch it. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Figure it out on your own. <laughs> my first DEF CON was 11 years ago. Uh, this is now my ninth year of being a goon. At year three, I earned my goon coin. When I don't have it in my pocket at DEF CON, it's permanently locked in a safe. I treat it as my most valuable possession. It's a symbol of our brotherhood. Uh, three years ago, I uh, was given a wonderful gift. I got a set of challenge points made for myself that I could give to people in our community. The outside ring of my coin contains six qualities. Loyalty, fraternity and honor. Sacrifice, dedication, and passion. I give these away to the people in our community who exhibit those six qualities and who have gone above and beyond. You, sir, are the recipient of number 15. Please take the coin. Thank you, sir. You stand relieved, sir. <laughs> Someone take this axe out of my hand. <laughs> Are you really sure you want to give this to me? <laughs> Could somebody else take the axe? <laughs> Noid, the team has also prepared this watch for you, which says that you will always be our commanding officer. Aww. Now here's where I get all weepy. You might also notice with the watch, if you take the winder, it comes out as a garrote, and you can, yeah. yeah. Remember that tonight. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right, well, for the first time in a very long time, I will not be presenting the network slides. You should cheer at that point. <laughs> All right, so let me introduce Effin, who has taken over the knock. Where are you, Louise? There you are. On the left. Luis, how's it going, guys? Woo! So let's go real quick. Oh, I got 10 minutes, seven minutes. That's too long. Um, so we're going to go over some stuff about the network team and what we do. In the case you don't know yet, this is some of the stuff that we do. We provide the wired uh, infrastructure. We've spent all week here and to provide things for speakers, vendors, contests, goons, um, servers, because like the media server from Jeff uh, is connected to the network, the wireless network when it's protected or not protected, which in 
we're going to talk about it. And this CTV as well. So if you're watching from your room, hello. So what else? The timeline. I know most of you know this already. Uh, bas basically, uh, the timeline is we got here a week. We got here a week ago, and we do set up for three days. Very intense work for the team. Um, we have a very awesome team. And then once the conference starts, that's when the last minute requests show up and we have to make it work, keep it working, and add some stuff to it. So, and tomorrow we leave. We're packing up and we leave. But as Steve said, um, we plan this all year long. And it's not different for, from the network side either. But we usually start talking about what's going to happen in January. And around March, we already have some planning stuff, deadlines for things. And when stuff gets red there, July, June, uh, that's when uh, we have lots of calls and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> the wired infrastructure, number one, uh, we have an uplink of 120 megabits per second, which Woo! some might, not, might say, oh, it's not that much. I have more more than this at home, maybe. <laughs> but I was looking at the old statistics, and at DEF CON 14, we had a 6 megabit per second uplink. So I think we're doing good. Um, and what else we do? We, have, uh, we use free BSD firewalls, uh, woo! 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 10 managed switches, and a whole bunch of unmanaged switches. And for the wireless stuff, we still have the same old trusty Aruba 6000 switch with about 50 APs. Hey, Louise. Yes? Did you burn out any APs this year? No, we didn't. Oh, that's very disappointing, guys. <laughs> but we got 802.1x. We pegged the bandwidth though, right? We did. We have a slide for that. <laughs> oh, you've learned well. <laughs> so talking about internet traffic, as you can see, uh, you guys somehow either... Uh, Nobody here sleeps, right? But of course, you stop using the network because you go to the bar and the casino. So that's, but during the party, you can see like Saturday night, uh, everyone was using that quite well. So really, those dips are just where the network traffic transfers to LodgeNet. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. And as for the local, so that was the internet traffic. This is the, and I'm going to go through this real quick. You, we're going to make this available in our website, defconnetworking.org, um, and we're going to add some more stuff as well there. But the interesting peak there is when Jeff put his media server on the network, and it was working well, and everybody was pulling stuff, and we had to put, apply some quality of service so you didn't break the whole network. As for Wireless statistics, this is the number of users. Uh, so we're, we packed around 600 users, and, but we had a, almost 4,000 unique MAC addresses. We know that it doesn't mean anything, but... <laughs> right? Uh, some stuff about statistics. We don't have uh, like a historic one for this one for a number of attacks because there were some talks about 802.1x attacks anyway. So there's better information there for you guys. Um, and on the right-hand side, you can see the coverage. This is like the real-time coverage of an hour ago. We always have issues. Um, some of them are sort of expected. Some are unexpected. We enjoy this as well. So uh, this year, the, we should make a t-shirt, 802.1x versus DEF CON Secure. As Mac, uh, the, other, the other leader of the NOC said, next year DEF CON Secure should be called DEF CON Gone Wild. <laughs> and I'd like to thank, this is the team, uh, everybody's name is there. They do an amazing job. As I said, we do a lot of planning for this, but there's some stuff that we, when, once we hit the ground here, is a lot of hard work. Uh, we all, this is a busy week for many people, and these people, they really put their heart and soul and hangovers to make this work. So, including in the transition phase, the retirement fail king, Lockheed. <laughs> and the attempted retirement, Heather. I don't know where Heather is. She's trying to retire, but she can't. 
Um, it was really interesting. Heather kept hanging around the knock, trying not to do work, and it, it, she, you know, that OCD just kept kicking in, and she'd reach over and grab something. Sparky would go slap her hand and push her back to her chair. It, was, it just happened for the last four days. It was really amusing. Yeah, she got kicked out of the knock a few times. <laughs> and I'd like personally to thank Mac for a lot of work that he put in. Uh, as I said, this is a busy week, and I am really busy as well. And once we hit the ground, he took care of mostly everything. So, Mac, thank you. I'd like to thank the hotel, DEFCON staff, the, the AV uh, staff at the hotel. They're amazing. They help us out a lot. Uh, we have a tw the Twitter account, so we can, you can follow us, but we're not going to be posting much stuff until around this time next year. Uh, <laughs> but this presentation is going to go to the DEF CON networking website. You have there the website. Any feedback, uh, knock at defconnetworking.org. Yeah? Okay, so <laughs> next. About it. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so we're up upgrading the wireless gear for next year, so we're going to get more stuff. Thanks, Jeff. And lastly, I have 55 seconds. I'd like to thank the random guy who showed up in the knock and said and dropped off like some goodies for us saying, I worked in a knock before. It's the nobody, like nobody sees you guys. Nobody knows everything, but you make it work and you take no recognition. This guy dropped off some stuff for us. Thank you, whomever you are. Okay, next up, we're going to have uh, Nico. You're going to talk a little bit about Roots. We're DEF CON kids this year. And you've got your countdown timer. All right, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Chris <laughs> and Wynn, if you're here, come on up and help me announce the contest. Uh, we had about 300 kids and their parents this year for Roots DEF CON kids. The kids found over 33 new zero days this year that we'll be responsibly disclosing to a lot of different vendors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had, uh, we had six contests this year. So kids, a lot of them have gone home. But if you're still around and you're a contest winner, you know it. Go ahead and start your way up here. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, the first contest we had called Sass Crack. Um, yeah, by a former White House executive, Sass Crack for the kids, where they learned how to break into a site that very, looked a lot like Facebook and Twitter. And they learned how to break into those pretty easily. I think all six kids got in. Uh, but Sneaky McLaughlin, Kira Munson, and DCS Man were the best in that group. So if you're around, come on up. Another contest we had that I think was absolutely the coolest contest in the entire kids' world uh, this year was, uh, you guys might have heard about the Samsung Smart TV hack where uh, some of the researchers taught you how to turn on the front-facing front camera on 150 million Samsung TVs out there. Well, they also showed the kids how to do it, and it turns out it's really easy to find zero days in Samsung Smart TVs. So three of the kids found zero days within an hour, um, and they're going to res re responsibly disclose these and actually make a lot of money for them because both Samsung and Facebook has bug bounty programs. So we showed the kids how to uh, submit. And as, uh, as part of that, they had to pledge, uh, if they were imparted with this knowledge, that they had to give one-third of their, of their bug bunny proceeds to the ACLU or the EFF. So we also made some money for them this year. So uh, Bryce got third place in that contest. Bryce, if you're here, come on up. Neil got second place, and Sci-Fi got first place. They all found zero days. 
Bunny Muffins also had a contest. We had a scavenger hunt this year, much like the adults have, but without the kissing or flashing or anything like that, obviously. So, um, and the Rainbow Team won. So, Rainbows, come on up. Uh, Sci-Fi had her contest for the third year in a row where she teaches all the other kids how to find zero days in apps. And Cryptina won. She found 27 new zero days this year in apps. Chris Hadnagy, are you here to talk about social engineering? I don't, okay. Okay. Go quick and then win. Go win. I'm going. I'm going. Hey, little guys. Let me jump in front of you here. Okay, so we have no time. So, uh, Bella, Esau, if you're here, come on up. They were our first place winners, Connor and Tibor, if you're here, second place winners. This year we had um, a, lot of, a lot of help. Michelle and Amanda and the team made this CTF for kids, and we were told it was one of the best events they ever had. These guys uh, traversed all different types of ciphers and also two uh, military-trained snipers shooting Nerf guns at their heads at high velocity. Just so they can win this competition. Great job, guys. Great job. And there's more stuff. Those are, by the way, um, quadcopters with hidden cameras in them. Which, come on, that's just freaking cool, right? <laughs> Okay, guys, we're going off stage. We're moving away. Yeah, go ahead and do that one. Right, you guys rock! Oh, Katina. Come on, guys. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I'm going to go down here. We're going to go down here. We're going to go down here. Mass confusion. This was the first year of Hacker Jeopardy for kids. It was awesome. I want to thank Jeff and Nico for trusting that I wasn't going to fucking curse at any of the goddamn kids. <laughs> As a result, I certainly do owe EFF a few dollars that I promised for each fucking word. I, well, never mind. Had two great teams, seven to 12 year olds. They are better than any adult Hacker Jeopardy team in history. So we've already been talking about, are you smarter than a DEF CON kid? My Little Ponies won room uh, 7 to 12. They got the rewards and prizes. If you guys are here, stand up. We don't have a lot of time. 13 to 17-year-olds, a group called No Comment, did awesome. And one word of advice for all the people that you know that are haters about what we're doing with the kids here. Have them go fuck themselves. Bring them on. Bring the kids here. It is awesome. They're the next generation. Thank you. My Little Ponies. Yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking of the Pony Awards. <clears throat> okay, we're going to talk about the fundraisers. We have a lot of fundraising activities happening at DEF CON uh, for various number of charities. And uh, first up, we're going to talk about the, uh, let's go to the next slide, the EFF fundraising. So, Mel, you want to talk about that? Or have you disappeared, Mr. Mel? Stealth. Mel is, what have you done to him? I know he's here. Oh, he's way over there. Okay. Mel used to, for many years, watched over the, uh, remember the shooting game we would have? And then we'd hack the shooting game and put my face and other goons' faces in there so you and can shoot us. And the dunk tank. And the, yeah, and then the, before that, the dunk tank. And they're like, well, the shooting game is kind of getting a little old. What should we do? It's like, well, we could do the dunk tank. And Mel's like, fuck no. <laughs> I'm not standing outside and burning myself. Um, so instead, he's kind of taken on a new role. And so when one, one thing ends at DEF CON, you can never escape. And I want to hand it off to Mel to talk a little bit about the fundraising activities we've had going on and announce some of the numbers that we've generated this year. So, Mel? Hey. What's the next slide? Is it Are we doing half? Yes, Okay. So, we're going to. Okay. Hey! DEF CON! <laughs> okay. So, um, wow, it's been really busy this time, and there's so many things going on that I want to tell you, but they said I've got to keep it short, so I'm going to try to run through it. 
Okay. Um, there were a lot. There were ten different organizations that were contributing to the EFF here. Um, the summit. Uh, Hackajar is going to come up and talk about that. They're doing an awesome job up there. So I'm not even going to give their number. I promised if I wouldn't do that. But there are others. The Mohawks. Any of you got Mohawks this time? Let's see. Stand them up. Stand them up. All right. All right. Well, the Mohawks for the EFF raised $5,058. How about that for craziness? Okay. Yeah, go Mohawk. And uh, our fantastically bizarre and creative Ed, Ed Mize, the wise Ed Mize. I know I'd get it right this time. The wise Ed Mize has raised $3,000 with his artwork for the EFF. Yeah, well, that's something. And, wait, not to be undone, we also have, where are these, oh, the fail panel, fail panel flapjacks, uh, flipping, flipping flapjacks for freedom. They raised $1,500 for the EFF today. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going with it, you know. I'm making up, I'm, going, I'm just on a roll, man, it's, don't stop me now. Okay, uh, then we got Cycle Overdrive is in at $1,215. Good job, Cycle Overdrive. <laughs> That's right, you know, pedaling it from coast to coast, raising money. All right, info booth. Did any of you go to the info booth? There are, you know, central place for what's going on, where it is, and why can't I find it? Well, even some of the people by there gave them money. They got $642 in donations at the info booth. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And the list goes on. Wi-Fi Village. Wi-Fi Village is there for $610. Okay. Open Wi-Fi. You rule. And we've got, in the hardware village, we've got uh, Learn to Solder. And Learn to Solder is a great program we had going. They raised $600 for the EFF. <laughs> and not to be forgotten, Hacker Jeopardy. Did any of you see Hacker Jeopardy? Yeah. Yeah, that's my boys. See, my buddy team, they won that. They props out, major props out to them. SoCal rules. Uh, Hacker Jeopardy and Vanna Vinyl with their photo opportunities raised $118 to kick in as well. <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on the final number here because there's a couple surprises, but, but I want to speak a little bit about the EFF. And, and those, there's a lot of initials in this business. Those of you that don't know, the EFF is the Electronic Freedom Foundation. Okay? And as long as DC won... <laughs> What's that? Drink. Drink? Drink? Did I fuck it up? Who's got a beer? Hey, audience, what does EFF stand for? Electronic Foundation. Foundation. Correct. You know, you're right. I always mess it up because I always think of the freedom thing on it, but I'll drink. They're responsible for why I'm still free. They've helped me out before. I love the EFF. Okay, great. All right, where were we? Well, anyway, as long as, as long as DEF CON has been around plus one year, so they're my plus one buddies, the EFF has been out there fighting to protect your digital rights. And I know that this group, in particular, is very concerned about personal privacy. Am I right? Yeah. All right, for many years we've talked about this here. We've had talks on it. We've had demonstrations showing things about it. Uh, you know, it's been an ongoing theme at DEF CON. And the, the basic focus here is that there needs to be some more controls and accountability for some of this stuff, okay? Now, many of you know in the news recently, there's been some discussion regarding a certain three-letter agency who will remain nameless. You can guess on your own. Anyway, as a result, corporations and individual citizens themselves are realizing that without greater transparency, the impact of this on our personal freedoms, the Bill of Rights, and the First and Fourth Amendment may be severely impacted. So, the EFF is fighting the good fight to preserve that, and you need to know that there are many powerful interests involved in this fight. As a result, the EFF needs your support and your help now more than ever before. So I'm asking each of you, go to EFF.org, learn more, look and see what they're doing, be part of it, be making a difference, be part of the solution. And that's my message to you, and with that, I think we're going to, uh, I'd like to invite our EFF friends to come up. And Hackajar. Hackajar, are you there? All right. Drink, 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 drink. Hold on.
All right. Uh, I guess EFF has elected for me to go first. So uh, my name is Hackajar. I'm part of Vegas 2.0, as you see up on the monitors there. Uh, we run a fundraiser on Thursday night for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The gist of it is that we convince all of the speakers from DEF CON and maybe some other conferences that are going on in town near the same time to come into a private event that you have to pay $40 at the door to get through to, and then you get direct access in a very small, intimate manner to all of the, the speakers throughout all these conferences and actually talk to them and get more information about their talks uh, in a more direct, not, hey, that was great, move on, hey, like, hey, I got this uh, thing I'm doing that's very similar to that. We have a lot of great success stories with this format where many people have sent us uh, testimonials that now they're doing projects with other people as a result of that and really pushing forward all these different interesting things that you come here to see. We also have uh, a bunch of entertainment and raffles and we give away so much stuff there and um, as a result, everybody wants to be there on Thursday night and I don't know if I cue somebody to hit the button to show the actual numbers that we raised. You ready? Yeah, so this year at the EFF Summit, we've shattered last year's number by three times and our ultimate record by double. So this year, and I think this noting character might have had something to do with this, uh, here's how much we actually raised. Not too shabby for four hours worth of work. <laughs> it was uh, on the back end. On the back end, we logged over uh, 800 hours uh, that we would know about of actually planning and everything getting this to this point. And so, I, I want to congratulate all of you out there that made it out and made this number possible and everything. Also, if we can hit the button again, I, I, I gotta get a shout out to all of our. Uh, vendors that uh, paid for the bar tab. It was like a $15,000 $15, bar tab to get you guys free booze at this event. Uh, so thank you, Google DLF. Thank you, Occuvant. Thank you, ISEC Partners. Thank you uh, to CrowdTilt. CrowdTilt gave us our seed funds to get this going. And uh, thank you to Tenergy. They do the uh, little power packs for you. Uh, that you can plug your iPhone and other devices in to keep them recharged when you're not near a charger. Tenergy is a really great uh, last minute partner. So thank you all very much and I'll turn it over to the EFF now. Thank you. Uh, before I turn it back over to Kurt with the EFF, I just want to give some final totals here. So we had um, Package our awesome job, man. Just keep that up. You're, you, you rock. You rock. So with a, with a 35,000 plus from the summit and the contributions from the other groups, that came to a total of $48,175. But wait, but wait, wait. That's not all. We have more. There's more. There's more. Yes, there's more. It begins to, it slices, it dices, it chops. No, but wait, there's more. At the EFF table themselves, they had a banner year. The EFF, and they're still counting the money, but the number they've given me so far was over $45,000. Together, that's about 93,000. I think when they're done, we're gonna be very close to $100,000 raised this year for the EFF. Thank you, all of you, for doing a tremendous job coming out for this. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. It is such an honor to be here, to be hanging out with you guys. Your support helps us fight for your rights to privacy, fight for your rights to free speech, and I'll keep on allowing you to hack all of the things. We are so honored to be able to defend this crowd and get so much support back. So thank you. Great, man. Actually, before we continue on, one thing, I'd like to bring up Edward really quick. Uh, this is the girl, this is my lovely wife, and she's also the founder of Mohawk Con. They also raise money for several other charities and other things, so I wanted to give her a chance to let you know some of the numbers that you guys help contribute to to some of these organizations. Hello, I'm Ed. Um, uh, in addition to the EFF, which um, 
Like he said, our total was $5,058.58. Um, part of the contributing factor to that was a bounty on Renderman and Funball's Mohawks. For those Mohawks, they raised, you guys raised $1,857.76 just for those two Mohawks. So there's Renderman right there. Um, I also had... You look good with the hawk, Renderman. I also had one fellow walk up to me at a B-Sides party and show me his fundraiser that I had no idea existed, and he raised $1,000 for his own mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was another lovely woman who raised $155 for hers. Um, in addition to the EFF, we support Hackers for Charity. This year, we raised $2,288 for Hackers for Charity. So I want to quickly thank you all for donating so much. Call out to my Mohawk Con cutting crew that shaved all of your lovely heads. And Mohawk Con's grand total this year was $7,346.58. Thank you. All right, next up we're gonna talk about a couple of the other fundraisers that we have here. Um, these are very near and dear to most of our hearts because we have people in the community that are directly affected and who um, benefit from these types of fundraisers. So I'd like to call up the uh, organizers of Be The Match. If you could come up and please join me. Do we see them, are they here? Oh, they had to take off yesterday. So the big thing about Be The Match is that this is a bone marrow registration. Um, a lot of people get freaked out when they hear about bone marrow registration and there's all kinds of weird, crazy things about how painful it is or whatever. All of that stuff has been surpassed. The new technology makes it to where it's very beneficial. I don't actually have the numbers for you, but I know that it was hundreds of you went out and signed up for this and are wanting to contribute and to be part of it. Um, they did have a match last year and they were able to get a DEF CON attendee who was able to contribute to somebody so that they were able to save their life. Um, <laughs> blood code, do we have the blood code organizers here? Please come up. Excellent, Jason's coming up right now. How's it going, guys? Um, I want to know that we, we totally did something different this year, and it was like really subtle, but I think it was really important. There were no gimmicks. There were no contests. There were no, I'm going to give you free stuff if you donate blood. And this was still one of the best blood drives they've had. It's like, so we don't need incentives to do something good. The numbers were, uh, for Thursday, total 29 donors, 42 donations. Friday, 44 donors, 58 donations. Um, Saturday, 45 donors and 65 donations. Um, also, she wanted to say, uh, Julie, that helped out with this, she said, the people who came to donate were some of the kindest, most generous people I've met in a long time. With or without gifts, swag, or prizes, their hearts are always in the right place. And that speaks a lot from someone who's not in the community but can see what the community does. So, guys, once again, y'all made this awesome. Y'all made this wonderful, and you made it. That's the reason why this is such a great community and a great place to be. Thank you once again. So I would, I would just like to add something to that. So being here for so long, I told you before, I watched this community grow and mature. Last year... They had to, we had so much blood from blood code, it had to be shipped out of state. She was literally welling up when she said, you guys absolutely kick ass. You totally beat the doctor's conferences. <laughs> and I think that's awesome. So I would like to say going forward, there's a lot of people in this room and I would like to see everybody give a pint of blood at DEF CON. Even more. I'm sure we can try and arrange something like that. Everybody but needs but a little hacker in them. Absolutely. <laughs> this is a classic example 
of showing the world what our community can do. So stick it to them, give them a pint of blood. So I'd like to, for those of you who've got something to drink, I want to just take a brief moment to, uh, we've got a, a little presentation, but I'd just like to, uh, to call out, uh, this year we, we lost two really key people of the community. A lot of you know or knew of Barnaby Jack, uh, Dark Spirit, and uh, Brad. Uh, Brad was uh, an amazing guy. I, this guy always ran at full speed. Um, his brain was overclocked. I think that's probably something that did him in. He was thinking and talking twice as fast and an amazing individual and, and we just want to call out and say that uh, while they're gone they'll never be forgotten. And uh, just give us a quick moment here, oh, a quick moment here to just uh, reflect on what it means uh, to be part of community and, uh, and what you can do to contribute to, to something bigger than yourself because these people did and they had a great time doing it. It wasn't painful, it was actually really enjoyable for them. So let's just, uh, let's give them a round of applause, have a drink tonight at the bar. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's pretty amazing when you're, you and your memory and your work will live on. Uh, the things they did were, were just unforgettable. So I know when I get hit by my bus, I um, <laughs> hope you guys will rise, raise a drink for me and for everybody else here because this is an amazing community. Okay, I'm not going to keep harping on that or I'll start crying. So let's, uh, let's kick off the contest winners. I want to hand that off to the contest coordinator, Pyro. And we're going to work through it. We've got black badges up here. Quickly. <laughs> we are going to go through this quickly, but in the interest of even spending more time, there's something a little special I'd like to do. To Most people don't know this. Falker sitting here on the front of the stage. It's his birthday today. So would you please join me in singing Falker, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Falker. Happy birthday to you. And many more. And many more, sir. All right, we're going to run through these really quick. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we kind of changed the way that we do contests and events this year. I'd like to take uh, just a second to thank all of my goons. Um, but to give you an idea of how large this department has grown, I first started gooning in DEF CON 7. Um, there wasn't really a formal contest and event group at that time, but there were people that were doing contest and event, and these people were out in hallways, maybe the occasional small room. It was absolutely insane. Uh, here at DEF CON 21, I've moved kind of, I tried to retire, and Jeff wasn't going to have any of that. So I moved into kind of an executive position. I'm now overseeing two lead teams. But to give you an idea of how large contest and events has grown to, we have 242 employees and contributors who are the contest lead or their supervisor, or I'm sorry, their supporters. So please give a big round of uh, applause to all of those people that helped bring all those to you. 242. 22 of those are just contest and event goons. And to give you an idea of how crazy it is to try to manage all this shit, it's 52 internal divisions. That includes the villages, all the individual contests and events, and everything else you see there. It's about one third of the DEF CON floor. Um, so I really do want to give a big props to all my goons that have helped me out. You guys were exceptional this year. I heard nothing but props and thanks. All right. So we're going to go ahead and keep moving on here. Beverage cooling contraption. Beer Seidel, first place. Hebrew, number two. Still using ice, number three. Now to give you an idea, still using ice are the winners from last year. And these guys won by stacking cups in top of each other last year and then pushing ice through it. Um, these other guys this year, they were allowed to use CO2 and nitrogen, um, so that's often used uh, or commonly used in uh, brewing beer. Um, but they did exceptional work. 
Uh, we got a little good information there. Crack me if you can. I don't have the numbers here, but I know that like the winner had cracked hundreds of thousands of passwords. It's absolutely insane. Um, Inside Pro, Team Hashcap, John Dash users, and then they had a street team winner, people that were contributing who weren't here at DEF CON, uh, but that was 16 systems. Black bag, obviously you can see up on the screen, I'm not going to get into really hardcore on this, uh, but this is an amazing competition where people are having to go in, do physical security, virtual security, they're having to hack your PC, they're having to do lock picking, they're having to find files and they're having to photograph them and make sure that all of that information gets put back to where somebody can't tell that they've been there. True proper red teaming. And I love the fact that uh, Deviant has really expanded upon what used to be Gringo Warrior to really bring you guys this competition. Winners this year, first place, Porno Claws. Second place, Hackers with Harriers. Third place, Fuzzy Hat. And uh, still in the running, Swords of Thunder. <laughs> Uh, Crash and Compile, uh, Fink Rules won this. Are you guys familiar with Crash and Compile? Everybody get to see it? Yeah. yeah, it's great, isn't it? I love watching really, really smart people get punished by getting drunk. I swear there was one guy up there that was just like, oh, there you go, over there. See that awesome die? That thing will kill you if it hits you. But they had to rule that in order to determine what they were going to be writing their code in. And I swear this one guy was just there to get the free beer because he'd be like, a, compile. Oh, it didn't work. Drink. B, oh, compile. It didn't work. Drink. But it's great. DEF CON scavenger hunt this year. Uh, too old for Captain Crunch was the winning team. <laughs> Indian Jones in was team two and Spam was team three. Again, this is a crazy, crazy competition and I was very disappointed because I really wanted to beat one of you guys for coming up and singing a 303 song to me. I hate that group. They, told, they took our handle, they took our logo. These guys are assholes. <laughs> Nobody ever came and got the points for it. Um, Exploit Hackathon. This was great. Last year, Exploit Hackathon came in. It was their first year, and none of you guys could beat it. Like, we didn't have anyone that was able to actually complete the, uh, the conference or the contest. This year, Toast kicked its ass. So big props and big ups to him. Um, Hackers Against Humanity, this is the amazing card game. If you guys uh, have not seen this, they're going to be giving the decks out for free. You'll be able to get the uh, PDF and be able to print your own decks. They also have decks available for sale, I think, through their uh, website. But the winning teams this year, Ass One. Uh, number two is Lors, Lauren Sis. I have no idea how to say that. Number three was Keith. <laughs> yeah, Keith. What a good handle, buddy. Nobody else here is named fucking Keith. Network Forensic Puzzle Contest, Red Team was number one, Tom Pohl was number two, Ninja Cyber Target Range, again, first year contest, but I'm actually really impressed with these guys. They had all kinds of different things these guys had to do in order to win, um, different types of Wi-Fi events and other things that were there. It was really cool. Uh, Casey won, Brandon was second, and Enrique was third. What's up with those handles? Yeah, again, really horrible handles here, guys. <laughs> when someone asks your name when you're signing up for a conference, you, or a hack at a hacking conference, you don't write down your legal name. Give them your handle. Hack Fortress, best hacker this year was Silk. Best uh, Team Fortress 2 player was Punks. And the winning team was Jolly and Friends with Zelda. Again, you guys are just absolutely kicking ass on that competition. I, I really appreciate all the work that Logan and Bruce and everybody else have done to bring that to DEF CON. It's very much become one of our more popular contests over the last couple of years. Um, definitely try it out. But you don't have to be a hacker. If you can play the damn video game, you can go and compete and get somebody else that can do the hacking side of it for you. Um, hacker Pyramid, Zaz, and who is your teammate, Zaz? Limchild. There we go. Limchild was the, uh, did I say it right? Close enough. It's over a microphone. I just kind of slurred. Blah, 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 blah. Knock to or something. But yes, uh, they won again. This is two years in a row. And they just absolutely go up there and destroy it every single time. So you guys need to bring some strong competition to beat them. Wait, so, so Zaz took his winnings. Five thousand, well, you get 10,000 Canadian pennies. He split them with his team member, cast his in, I think it was epoxy, and was carrying around his pimptacular, like, flavor flav, 5,000. Canadian penny necklace, but you've won again. How can you carry 10,000 pennies around you? I expect to see another one next year on your back. There you go. Ah, okay, okay. So for those that didn't hear it, they donated all of the winnings this year to the Mercurial Fund. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's a fund that's been set up to get hackers and students here to DEF CON to help them break into this community.
took my rascal. This was awesome. If you guys didn't see the really cool rascals that were all pimped out with lights and like uh, an IV drip for uh, Jägermeister, it was, it was nuts. The only problem is we can't announce a winner because the people who made the best ones all work on my staff and contest and event staff are not allowed to participate from a competitive standpoint. So next year, go run a rascal. Um, I was going to bring it up. It's like $70 for the entire weekend. And that's a pretty easy way to be able to walk around so that your feet aren't just killing you. Uh, project two this year, ponies, Iora two, team uh, DG, what is it, RDG? Yeah, dyslexia is a bitch. And then uh, PTFS, and then Sopi Sopi. They were the big winners uh, this year. Again, project two is another one of those where unlike CTF, where these people spend literally year round getting ready for this competition, you can show up and just ask to play Project 2. They'll give you information, they'll give you tips, they'll give you hints, and it's a really fun um, multi-approach type attack uh, um, contest. Definitely look into it. Beard and Mustache contest. You can see the winners up there. I'm not going to go through each one of them. Um, but it, this year, uh, Redbeard sadly has told us that he's going to step down. I guess he's going to try to hand the contest over to Jack Daniel if he's interested in running it. Um, which kind of makes sense, right? But... Uh, <laughs> He's, Red Bear's coming back next year with a brand new competition, and I'm not going to, like, tell you anything about it because it's absolutely amazing, but you do not want to miss it. In my opinion, it's going to be one of the strongest, coolest first-year competitions we've ever had. Snowden Lookalike Contest. This was great. Now, I wasn't, this was a contest that I approved about a week and a half before we had gotten, um, like everything locked down and closed, like deadline was over and done with. When he called me up and told me about this, we had to do it. Red Snow won. The real Edward Snowden came in second place, funny enough. <laughs> Snowy was number three. Ionic was uh, four. And Ed Snowden, number one, was number five. <laughs> Tamper Evident this year, we turned it into a village. It's become such a popular contest and gotten so big that this year, Tamper Evident and Hardware Hacking Village uh, ended up sharing a space. And even though they did their competition, it was kind of neat to be able to see people wandering in and just kind of learning the technologies. Jeff created this contest three years ago, four years ago, and, and it's incredible to just see how much it's grown in that time. Uh, this year, first place can, uh, winner was I Parted Event, <laughs> uh, Team Slack, and Gotta Have One. And we definitely want to thank the motherfucking professionals for running the village. You guys did an exceptional job. Again. To all the villages, you guys, if you spend time in the villages, give these guys love because they're spending months and months of time spending up getting it ready for you. The DEF CON Darkneck Project, this is a first year competition uh, brought to us by Smitty and some of our other really good friends. Uh, their winners this year were Friday, uh, Captain Nick and Joe. Um, and I am going to make a recommendation next year that this contest uh, will be a black badge. Um, Jeff gets the final say on all that kind of stuff. I just make the recommendations. But after seeing the amount of work, time, and effort that people had to put into this event, I definitely think it deserves one. <laughs> Schemaverse uh, Championship. This is when you're going in, hacking a huge database, and doing all kinds of work with it. It's quite impressive. Uh, Shepard took first place. Yin got the most money. Final Bitcoin Panopolis Conqueror. I think I said that right. was Robog. And the best hack was Yin and Shepard. They were talking about how cool this was because I guess that one of the guys, Yin, who had the most money, just went in and hacked it and like completely loaded his thing completely full and then dosed it so that nobody else could get any money. <laughs> um, and then Chris Bix, uh got uh, honorable mention for style and if I remember right, it's because he was just stealing money from others. <laughs> The Warlock Games came in. Again, another war game type situation. Uh, Hoovman won first, Workaholic second, Noel was third, Happy Together fourth, and Doxog was fifth. Wireless Panathlon. Again, five different things that you have to do in Wi-Fi to be able to win this competition. Each one of them a different style of hack. Total Harmonic Distortion plus N was number one. Red Baron, number two. And by the way, he functioned alone. Red Baron was all on his own on this one. Um, and Simon J was third. Hacker Pyramid, are you guys here? I'd like you guys to come up and give your announcement on that because I didn't have your paperwork in time. <laughs> Run! That's Hacker Jeopardy. Here he comes. You're moving. Run, Forrest, run! Hi. 
What do I have to announce? <laughs> I, I, I'm a what? Tell us who the winners are. Uh, Zaws and Lintile won. Okay, excellent. We just didn't have it on paper. So. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, I mean, you know, you're more than welcome to run all the way back. Yeah, run back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get really a black badge. Yeah, get black badge. Yeah. yeah, you gotta yeah, that, bring him up. No. That's happening? Yes. Yeah. Bring him up. Really? Zaws, Lintile, get your asses up here. Thank Jeff. <laughs> Jeff! Oh my god, he's gonna crap himself. Well, fuck me, I didn't know this was gonna happen, but uh, Lintal already left. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I'm here. Jeff, Jeff, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well then, Jeff. I guess that means you only get one badge. Yeah. No, no, wouldn't do that. Wouldn't do that. So, oh, shit. here you go. For outstanding achievement in dominating Hacker Pyramid twice in a row, black badges for you both. And I, you've got a. Yeah. Taken to Lintile. Excellent. Yeah, so very outstanding achievement, you. you guys. You've got to make room for people who are not quite as skilled next year. <laughs> Pardon me while I fall off the stage yes. and then go for a run. Excellent. <laughs> next up, we have Hacker Jeopardy. As all, you all know, Wynn retired last year. Wynn retired last year. G Mark came in. And what do we all say, guys? Don't fuck it up. Perfect. We had a good time. Hey, cast members, come on down here. Hey, we've gone from the early days when Wim was just on his own to a team of 10. We've got Vanna, Kitty's here, Lintile's on a plane, Alex is out, Ginny's here, Fizzgig, Hackajar, Boca John, Int 128. This will be a full production. This year was pretty good. We had, uh, finally, we got to over to track one, so we had enough room. Come on out next year. We're going to get even more interesting. First game, we had taking a WikiLeaks, won that. Second game. It was, we call them Win Job, but their actual name was G Mark. I'm going to let you finish, but Win gives the best HJ ever. <laughs> and uh, game three, F and Mord won. For the final, Nice Act Gray defending for the fifth time failed to hold on to their crown. And Win Job is the new winners. We have a new set of Hacker Jeopardy winners. We got Doc Who, Freck, and Jake23. Come on down! On my left. Gentlemen, you did not fuck it up. <laughs> not yet, anyway. You did not fuck it up. Don't drop it, right? It's yeah. very fragile. Yes. Fuck it up. Dun, 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. They'll be back next year to defend their crown. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna jump over to uh, capture the flag winners. We have to go a little bit of out of order because they've got to run for an airplane, and uh, we can't take the badges away from them because this is too much of an amazing event. As if you've been paying attention, about several years ago, three years ago, I really wanted to grow the size and the scope of capture the flag contest and really try to turn it into sort of like the World Series of hacking. And with the new organizers, Legit BS, they've really done that. And they've made the contest more transparent. And they've also continued the tradition of uh, having teams that have qualified in other places at other contests around the world pre-qualify. Winning team from the previous year gets seated, and then the rest goes to open quals. And so for the first time ever, we had a team uh, from China. We had teams from other countries that have never participated before. And it's really been an amazing experience. So I want to have Legit B BS come up, and I want them to say a couple words, and then, uh, and then we're going to announce the, how the teams went and who the winners were. So let's uh, welcome the new organizers for an amazing first year. So when you're ready, to take the badges from there. OK. Good evening. I'm Vito Genovese, and we are the Legitimate Business Syndicate. We're proud to have been selected. <laughs> We're proud to have been selected to host the DEF CON 21 Capture the Flag event. We're up here and we're going to share the results and a quick summary of what the game was like. 
So first of all, we'd like to thank Dark Tangent for taking a chance on us. We'd also like to thank the security goons for keeping our room clean and entertaining and safe. We'd like to thank the DEF CON network operations team for providing all the teams wired internet access throughout the whole competition. And finally, we'd like to thank all the teams that qualified for running a clean and honorable game. So this year, we limited teams to eight people. And to support this, we gave them fewer and more difficult services to torment them with. We also ran the game on the ARM architecture for the first time. So what this meant was each team had an individual server all to themselves. It made it a lot easier us for admi to, to administer this. And it also tortured the teams without their well-honed x86 reverse engineering skills. So DEF CON Capture the Flag is the highest level of computer security competition. Some teams ended with very, very few flags, but they competed well with great skill. And up next to introduce our winners is Gyno Phage. By the way, I want to thank you guys. Show them the computer again. For you that didn't appreciate it, that is the computer that the teams were hacking, like protecting and hosting. In the past when we've done this, the team, like the organizers have literally rolled in racks of servers. These guys hosted all of it in one, one U. Two U. Two U, sorry. In one, two U. It was Thank amazing. Love, yeah. love, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hi, I'm Guy Nofage from Legitimate Business Syndicate. Second and third place teams will receive the hardware that they played the game on this year so that they can maybe bump up to first place next year. <laughs> they will receive that after closing in that hallway. Do not come up here when we call you out. First place will receive eight black badges. In third place, we had Rayon ASRT. In second place, we have the men in black hats. And in first place, we had PPP, the plaid parliament of pony. Thanks, everybody. Winning team, please call them up. You gotta give me your badge. Run! No, they've never won. Uh, yeah, DT asked if they were multiple year winners. This, I believe, is the first year PPP has won the DEF CON CTF, though they have done very well at other CTFs. Uh, all right. Um, yeah. How big is your team? How many people? Eight people. Um, yeah, thank you for Legitimate BS for running a very awesome CTF this year, especially for your first time. And thank you to the rest of our team, uh, Plaid Parliament of Poning, kicked ass, and thank you very much. Our secret techniques are secret. So here are the eight badges, and I actually just fucking broke one. So, which one of ever you get the uh, messed up clockwork? Oh. Oh, there we go. Jeff swapping out. Look at that. I can't touch anything without fucking it up. Drink. Drink. Uh oh, we lost one. Okay, no, they're fine. We're swapping. We're gonna put this up there now. Cool. Okay. What was the pit that dropped? You got it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, it turns out I can it fix it. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Which one? Okay, social engineering. They're not there. Social engineering. Social engineering. Oh yeah. Okay. The social engineering uh, CTF. Yeah. For some reason, you don't have a slide here, so we don't know who won. So you're gonna have to come up here and tell us. 
What's my time? Do I have? Okay, so I just want to take a couple seconds to thank everybody in the audience who kept nagging uh, DEF CON for a bigger room because that you made what happened today possible with Apollo Robbins coming in and getting track four. And for the guys who moved into our room, you guys were really awesome and cool. So thank you for that. Really, really appreciate that. Um, Pyro, I love you, bro. Every year. I love you too, man. And Cheryl? Where's Cheryl? Right here on the other Is she not the queen of DEF CON people? Come on. Queen of DEF CON. For you who don't know Cheryl, Cheryl is your event coordinator. She deals with the union, the hotel, the fire marshals, literally everything. Without her, we could not do this. So give her a big round of applause. Yeah, seriously. 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 And, and if you see Betsy roaming around the hallway, give her a hug. She needs it. A big... Oh, she's still working and we're all here partying. Give Betsy a hug, damn it. Where's the DT? Thank you. Awesome, awesome this year. So anyhow, um, I want to just uh, say uh, thank you to, to everyone who competed this year. What we did, we had men versus women. I won't go through the whole competition. But I want to say, ladies, you killed it this year. Wow. I mean, you just <laughs> murdered us. Really, seriously, for, for the women, for the women. Wow. I don't normally do this, but I'm just going to say there was hundreds of point difference in between the first place winner and the next person underneath them. That's how awesome the women did this year. It just blew us out of the water. I'm a little embarrassed to even be up here. I should have had Michelle do it. Anyhow, I want to th just before I get there, I'm going to thank my whole team because without this, without Eric, Nick, Jim, Michelle, Amanda, Thomas, Billy, Anna, this, this stuff would have never happened this year. Okay, Lily's got a flight. You want to hear this? 7.30, and she's waiting because she won first place. 7.20. So get her, get her up here, Lily. And Lori, Lori, if you're here, you're the second place winner. Run up here quick. So, so I want to... I want to thank the guys from Ace Hackware because what she gets is like the, if I can show you, if we had time, it'd be awesome. She gets like the coolest little SE gear. There's lock picks, bump keys, a shove knife, um, uh, like one of those little Wi-Fi Pawnee Express, um, uh, one, one, the number 100 SE coin for the year. But, 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 where's the coolest part? Where is it, DT? Where is it, Pyro? The cool, this? The no. broken one? No. Oh, that one? <laughs> This one? Yep. Black badge. <laughs> so, that's Lily. Thank you very much. Go get your plane. Okay. I got one minute left. Lori, get your butt up here. Lori gets a similar thing. Just it's not as a cool case, but a lot of really cool SE stuff. Bump keys, lock picks, and one of those, um, a, a pen with a, a little mini camera in it. No black badge for you, but you know That's what? Okay. Come back next year and play it again. Yeah. You women rock. See you guys next year. All right, and at this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Jeff, who uh, can close out again. I I'd... Oh, no, no. capture the packet. See, you guys, you guys made me drink over and over again, and I get too drunk to do this shit. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Capture the packet. They're coming up next. Where are you, gentlemen? There they are. I'm drinking. Okay. Come on up. We got to capture the packet. Hey, everyone. So uh, what would you guys think of the area this year? Like the DJs, the wall of sheep, all the thing, new things we brought? Yeah? So if you, if you didn't find us, you didn't get swag. If you played, you learned, you did anything, you got swag. This year? So, so Capture a Packet, uh, in its fourth year, 2013, we uh, had over 100 people step up for the challenge. Um, we played, uh, we uh, had them have to sort through over 20 terabytes of traffic. Uh, third place uh, was uh, My Little Ponies. I'm sure it's not the same team that played in the kid <laughs> competition. <laughs> Maybe. <No. laughs> if it was, it explains everything. <laughs> um, second place was Digirev. Um, first place was uh, CCSF Hackers, uh, who scored 2,500 points. And uh, 
We, uh, thanks to our sponsors, uh, RSA uh, donated two MacBook Air Pros uh, to them. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. We, we, uh, we trained over a thousand. Uh, Let's have them come up. Oh, yeah. you want to have them come yeah. up? Are you guys out here? Sam, Siler? All right, Whoa, come on up. They are. <laughs> I got plenty of time. Look at that. I can like stay up here. And <laughs> Where, are the... Where are the badges? Where are they? Someone give them to me. Are these them? Okay. They're going to share one badge, so I think one's going to sneak in and the other one's going to come back out. And... <laughs> He's the one. All right. Good job, guys. You did an amazing job. And look for us next year because we're going to give you a, a lot harder challenges. Yeah, just since since we still have time on the clock, oh, I might as well say, yeah, I'll just hog it. So really quickly, one of our challenges, we decided to pull in a little bit of uh, physical security inside of the network forensics. So the challenge, you had to pull an image of a physical key out of the stream and then figure out the pin code, and that was the answer. So good luck next year. Try to try a little harder for those of you that kind of, nah. but we had a we had a whole bunch of stuff over in the next uh, next area where you could just learn, and we've trained over maybe what 200 people right. that that knew nothing about digital forensic network forensics from zero to to capturing a lot of traffic. So come yeah. come to us and learn. We have a lot of time left over, so I'm going to mention <laughs> the, the Wi-Fi sheep hunt. It was the uh, second year. We ta we put RFID tags on all the goons. And uh, they were running around, and you had to r run into two goons to get a password. Yeah. Also, uh, we tagged them with. Uh, N yeah, N here N I'll go. We tagged them with <laughs> NFC tags. So, so this this right here is an NFC tag poster, and um, kind of strange, you know. We have all these, it, you know, these tags around, and, and you guys were just like, oh yeah, free stuff, let's do this. So, you, you put your phones up there, and, and, and you, you you know touch this, and you touch the badges on all these other people, and, and you know we, we're. We're stand-up guys. We have ethics, so we we rickrolled you. We we gave you discounts on stuff, free music. But we also showed a demo with malware that can drop on your phone, and then all your SMS texts can go to any one of us. So be very careful. Yeah, I'm, Use I'm this getting, with caution. I'm getting some of yours now. So yeah. So thanks to everyone that helped at the Wall of Sheep, capture the packet, all our stuff. Everyone, have a good one. And th thanks, Jeff. So what did you guys think of the badges this year? So we had a lot of people participating. It came down to the wire on Saturday night late. It was two teams that were like neck and neck and uh, Team MLF, I think that stands for Muppet Liberation Front, actually went ahead and pulled in, out in, freight, in, in front. Um, we got, if you guys are there here, come on up, like quickly, we're in a hurry. The MLF guys. So, give them a hand. So, for those of you who don't know, these guys worked pretty much all of Con on the contest. Um, they had to collect information from every single variant of the badge that's out on the conference, including the press, the speakers, all of the human variants. They had to do um, all kinds of OTPing with the four different pieces from the different suits. Each suit was a different crypto puzzle in and of itself. Then they had to OTP all those together. They had to get websites. They, um, there was just a lot to it. It took them bit pretty much the entire con. So we've got one here, and due to an unfortunate accident, um, we're, we're one short. So you guys are getting actually three black badges this year. So everybody thanks to Jeff for that. So, it, you know, it's, it's... What was their winning technique? So, you guys want to take just a few seconds really quickly and, and tell something about what you did. Uh, time and alcohol and doing absolutely nothing but looking at the code, and that's it. I mean, that's really all we did the whole time. What was, some, what was something that was hard or something? Oh, dude, it was the whole... find the, the red paper. Oh, my God. Actually, the last thing was... <laughs> so, so, I kind of I kind of screwed these guys. At the very end, they had to give me a solution, and I said, it has to be written on red paper. 
so just one little thing, more thing to drive them nuts. So they had worked hard to get this solution. They're racing other teams, and they're like, they have the solution. They're like, we don't have any red paper. So I saw them running through the, the yeah. hotel looking for red paper. Yeah. So anyway, guys, give them a hand. It's an incredibly difficult conversation. So again, I hope you guys like the badges. I'm always open to suggestions for, for stuff for the next years, and um, I hope everyone had a little bit of fun looking at the code on the back. Has so. there been a Make one that I can't break. Have you, <laughs> have you noticed a trend in badges lately? You know, when, when Loss has been working on it, it seems to be electronic. And then there was that physical badge. Yeah. Yeah, the and then last year, here. I think it was electronic. Yeah. And then this year was physical. Correct. <laughs> huh. <laughs> I wonder. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I tried to. Yeah, liquid. <laughs> so, all the ROT 13 that's on all the badges that you guys have, that was actually just a red herring as far as the contest was concerned. So, they had to do different things with OTPs and, and stuff again. Like anyway. That was just to mess with them. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the stuff. Yeah, so this is the last one. All right, so that winds up, winds up uh, the award ceremony. So I've got just a couple announcements, minor announcements. One is a reminder, for those of you who came in late, if you are missing a badge, you have a paper badge, you don't have a real badge, we still have a limited number of real badges up here. We'll swap out, we'll take your old one, give you a new one so you've got that. And then I also have a message. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys went to the Telefreak party last year. But they're doing an after party, a DEF CON after party. Everybody's invited. <laughs> I'd like to see you all fit. <laughs> but this is, I mean, what do I know? I'm just, I got a text message and he's like, yeah, invite everybody. <laughs> to the Telefreak 2600 net party. It's 8 p.m. at area. Follow Pound, uh, at Telefreak or find someone with a pager. They gave out these cool pager watches that gives the exact room location. But uh, go to at Telefreak and if you want an after party, you're still around tonight. I dare you to try to wedge yourself all into the area there. That's she said. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'd love to get feedback by email. Send us email. Go to picks.defcon.org. Upload your picks. Share, this, uh, share your experiences with everybody. And uh, with that said, I want to have a round of applause for everybody that made it possible. And for you guys, we'll see you next year right here.